We're not at City Hall, obviously. Uh, we appreciate the uh, last minute uh, change of location. Um, and there's a purpose for doing that. Uh, today, here, we're here at uh, the New Life Assembly Church here on uh, Kibbe and uh, Calumet. And despite the uh, torn up Kibbe Street, everybody managed to find uh, their way here uh, to, this, uh, uh, to this church, um, which is really lovely. I hadn't seen the, uh, the back uh, of the church in a long time. I hadn't come down Calumet, and uh, so seeing the condition of this facility is, is really lovely. So, uh, and we've been, we're here for a particular reason, and I want to introduce Chief, Gar Chief uh, Kevin Martin, uh, Chief Garlock, uh, Chief Kevin Martin this morning uh, to uh, tell us why we're here. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. And I will say that uh, it has been about four years since I was referred to as Chief Garlock, so a uh, <laughs> little bit of a throwback there. Although, actually, it is not uh, inappropriate to mention Chief Garlock because, uh, actually, he was uh, very instrumental uh, initially at the time as a major back in the early 90s, or what we called then inspectors, back in the early 90s, and helping to bring about uh, community policing and adopting the philosophy of community policing into the Lima Police Department. Uh, and then um, in 1995, we kicked off our pilot project with neighborhood substations. Uh, and by 1998, we'd actually grown to have uh, a total of six substations, eight neighborhood officers. Uh, and the program was working very well. Uh, it was a great opportunity to reach out to the community and to build uh, <coughs> levels of trust like we had never seen before that uh, with our community. Uh, and to be able to uh, just better partner with our community in terms of solving the problems related to crime, the fear of crime, and neighborhood decay that not just our community, but every community across the nation has to deal with at some point in time. Unfortunately, though, there were some economic hard times that began uh, in the very late 90s and, and lasted for a number of years. And one of the casualties of that economic downturn that we had to face within the city of Lima, and again, I might mention that we faced all across the nation. Uh, one of the casualties of that economic downturn was the neighborhood substations. Uh, and so they went away actually in 2002. And I've not talked to anyone since then that ever felt or expressed to me that they felt the uh, substations were a bad idea or that they were not effective. Uh, and so it's, it's actually uh, a very exciting time for us at the Lyme Police Department to be able to bring that project back, to, to bring back the concept of neighborhood substations. I should mention we have never gotten away from the philosophy of community policing, and we've continually looked at new ways that we can apply that philosophy in terms of the relationship building and in terms of the problem solving and in terms of uh, crime prevention. Uh, but nothing that we have done since having lost the neighborhood substations has been as effective, uh, at least from my perspective, as what the um, neighborhood substations and having the neighborhood officers assigned to specific high crime areas uh, to, uh, again, get in and, and really interact on a much more personal level uh, with the residents within those communities or within those neighborhoods uh, within our community to, to be able to, to work together and to, you know, just not seeing an us versus them type of mentality, but seeing a we mentality put in practice. And so again, it, it is with a great deal of uh, pleasure and uh, also I will say a, a certain amount of pride that we're able to bring that concept back. Um, the lieutenant that has been assigned to oversee the uh, community policing and the neighborhood policing substation project is Lieutenant Andy Green, and he has got some more specific information about the substation that's going to be located here in the back of this building uh, at New Life Assembly Church. And, and I guess one last thing before I bring Lieutenant Green up though that I want to mention is that, uh, you know, we are so very, very appreciative of Pastor Wardle and his staff and all the members of the congregation here at New Life Assembly for truly opening up this facility, opening up themselves. And, and again, when we talk about police community partnerships, um, they are a living example of what that partnership means. 
uh, and, and how you put that partnership into practice. And so, uh, again, before I actually turn things over to Lieutenant Green, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, everyone from New Life Assembly Church and, and uh, for their willingness to partner with us and for the trust that they're displaying in us uh, by making this available to us. But now this, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Lieutenant Green. Thanks, Chief. Um, again, we're, uh, we're very excited, as the Chief said, to be opening this substation. We've been working on this for several months now, ever since uh, we started the ball rolling. It's, it's been nonstop. Myself and Sergeant Garlock have been working extremely hard trying to put the pieces together to make this happen with site selection, uh, selecting officers, um, and then actually once we selected the sites, getting down to where we figured out how it was gonna work from day to day. Um, we didn't start from the ground up on this. As the chief said, um, this is not the first time Lima PD has done COP. So we looked back at that program to determine where we were going to begin and uh, help set the direction for this program. Uh, the officer selected to work out of this COP substation is Officer Aaron Rohde. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. As some of you may know, he was married on Saturday. So he decided that his wedding was more important, and I agree with him that it was more important for him to uh, attend his wedding on Saturday, and then he is now somewhere in the tropics enjoying his honeymoon with his wife. So we allowed him to miss this, and, which puts me up here. But um, I talked to him a couple of days ago. He is extremely excited. He is ready to come into this office and into this neighborhood and get to work. He's got a lot of work ahead of him, and he, and he knows that. So he is, he is ready to go. Um, he's ready to start the partnership with this neighborhood as well as with New Life Assembly, who has been gracious enough to allow us to come into this building. Uh, Officer Rohde is going to be assigned to this neighborhood on a full-time basis. Um, that doesn't mean he's going to be in this building full-time. That means he's going to be working this neighborhood. So he is going to be identifying problems in the neighborhood along with the other COP officers and the pinpoint officers, the supervisors and street officers. He is going to be finding those problems, taking crime tips that we get from the community that come in on our Facebook pages, and then he's going to be finding ways to solve those problems. Um, he will have regular office hours, and I want to tell you about those. So the regular office hours are going to be twice a week uh, to start out with. They are going to be on Tuesdays from 9 in the morning until 12 noon, and on Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. We are going to start those office hours tomorrow. Even though Officer Rohde will not be here, we will be staffing those with other members of the police department. Tomorrow, uh, Sergeant Garlock, who is the supervisor that's directly responsible for COP, he will be staffing those office hours tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, our crime prevention specialists who are here with us over here, they will be staffing those on Tuesday. I believe that's right. And then we have another COP officer from one of the other neighborhoods that is getting ready to launch. He will be staffing them next Thursday. So then by next, the following Tuesday, Officer Rohde will be back and he'll take over. Um, so Officer Rohde will return to work on September 14th. He will report to the police department and then he will come out and begin work out here. Um, as part of this initiative, we have launched another Facebook page. So we have the Facebook page for the Lima Police Department, which is facebook.com forward slash Lima Police Department. We created a Facebook page specifically for this neighborhood substation. The address of that page is www.facebook.com forward slash Lima Police Department COP2 because this is uh, Precinct 2. So again, Lima Police Department COP2. On that Facebook page, we are going to have the ability to receive private messages from residents or people who travel through this area, work in this neighborhood, who may have information that they want to pass to Officer Rohde. Um, it will also be a place for us to post information pertinent to the neighborhood and to the entire city. On that Facebook page, there is contact information for Officer Rohde, myself, and Sergeant Garlock. 
Um, I'm going to give it to you here in just a minute also, though. Um, Officer Rohde has an assigned cruiser, which will be his. He'll drive the same car every day. In that car, it has a laptop computer, just like all of our streetcars do. Um, to save us and also to help him from having to have a separate desktop computer in his office, we are going to detach the laptop from inside the cruiser and he will bring that in and he will use that to work every day. So he will have the same information available to him at his desk that he has in his cruiser and vice versa. It's gonna be a, a good thing for him. He'll be able to see not only information that's coming in through our Facebook pages and, and do various paperwork things that he has to do, but he will also be able to see our call screen and know what calls are active and he will know what's going on in this neighborhood. Um, contact information, if you need to reach Officer Rohde, he has a phone number, which is 419-812-3143. That will be the, the contact number for this COP office. It is his cell phone. He's going to, he'll, he'll have it with him all the time. He may not answer at 3 o'clock in the morning, but you can always leave him a message, and he will get the information and be able to return the call. Uh, Sergeant Garlock the direct supervisor over COP, his phone number is 419-812-0071. And my phone number, if you need me, is 419-549-6162. Um, again, as the chief said, we're very thankful to New Life Assembly for welcoming us into their building. We're excited to start working on this project and we know that the best is yet to come with this. Thank you. I should uh, mention that uh, when we first did this uh, back in 95, uh, there was no such thing as laptops. Uh, not, not that we're in the price range we could afford anyways. There was no such thing as um, social media. Um, so we have some new tools. Um, that uh, are going to be fully deployed uh, with this initiative and uh, having Lieutenant Green in charge is really a very good thing because he's been in charge of our social media um, outreach uh, since the beginning. He's done a terrific job with uh, what are now I think seven different social media outlets uh, that uh, Lima Police Department uses. It uh, truly has become I think a a very versatile way of uh, informing the public about uh, uh, what's happening in a positive way, but also in terms of emergencies and other kinds of, of things that are happening, um, crime suspects and the like. Uh, and I expect that those same kinds of, uh, of um, results will happen now through the, uh, the new social media attached to this COP uh, substation. So we look forward to, uh, to that getting off the ground. And then I believe in a couple weeks, Chief, there's going to be an announcement about the rest of the uh, strategy. Uh, yes, and actually we um, do not have the signed agreements in place yet for um, the next two of the uh, community policing substations. Ideally, eventually, although we will still have just three neighborhood officers, uh, we're hoping to have a total of five substations and, and we'll have to uh, give that information as we're able to lock things in place. Uh, but um, yeah, this is not the end today. This is the beginning, uh, and we're going to expand the, the project. And, uh, Mayor, would you uh, mind if I acknowledge the members of council that are here sure. as well? Uh, I do want to take a moment to also acknowledge and thank the members of the Lima City Council that are here today because, again, had they not made the funding available for us to proceed on this with the staffing and, and some of the other expenses that were associated with uh, these efforts, if they had not made that available for us, and approve that we would not be able to be here today talking about what we're talking about. So uh, uh, in the audience today we have Councilor Tebbin, Councilor Miles, and Councilor Adams. Uh, of course, Councilor Adams, this is within her ward, so I would uh, imagine that uh, she, uh, I'm guessing you're very excited about it as well. So um, we really appreciate your being here today to show support in this way as well, so thank you. Uh, and I'll just add a word, uh, Pastor, thank you for the generosity 
of uh, your congregation and, and the uh, partnership with the Lima Police Department. It's great to be here. Thank you. Um, next, I'd like to introduce uh, the mayor of Ottawa. Uh, Dean Meyer is here. And he, Dean, come up. And he has some, an announcement to make about some discussions that are underway with the city of Lima. Thank you, Mayor Berger. Good to have you here. Appreciate it. Well, as you said, I'm the mayor of Ottawa, and we are, we, I've been with the village of Ottawa now through council positions and now as the mayor for, this is my 24th year. And during that whole 24 years, I've been hearing from the EPA that we need a second reservoir. We need to have uh, more, a backup supply of water. Well, especially now with all the algal bloom talk and all the things that are going on with, you know, the contaminated like uh, Lake St. Mary's and Lake Erie and whatnot, we are exploring the possibility of hooking up with the Lima water system. And that to me is a very exciting possibility because that will, if, if that comes to fruition, that will buy us time you know, it, it will save our residents money as opposed to a new reservoir. It, uh, it just makes sense that, you know, we can maybe partner with Lima in this, in, you know, in this expansion of water, which I actually can work both ways. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it would help Lima out as well as a backup supply as well. Um, we've, we've had a very good relationship with the city of Lima for many years. Um, there, there were times when Lima asked us to do some of their lab work with their water. Um, you know, that was way back in the 80s, even before my time, but we, we've had some, some back and forth help. When we had a flood in 2007, you were gracious and, and, and gave us water, you know. So, you know, it was the National Guard and the, uh, helped transport the water back and forth, but in the flood, we had water leaks and we couldn't produce enough water. It was, it was kind of a mess, but you guys really helped out and I appreciate that. Um, some of the things that the EPA, they're going to require, they're, they're already saying that the size of the facility you have has, there, there's too many water supplies in the state of Ohio. They're going to consolidate all over. This to me just is a good, I guess, opportunity for the village and for the city of Lima to partner on, on uh, water and maybe you know, maybe some other things as far as, you know, purchasing or uh, there's a lot of things that can that can go along with this that would help us out a lot. And, and hopefully you you guys as well. So that's what I'd really like to say is I'm, I'm really excited that we have this opportunity. So thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Just to uh, confirm what we're basically announcing is the beginning of a set of discussions uh, for uh, backup uh, water relationship and uh, we know that um, the uh, city of Lima's investment in its reservoir and water treatment facilities uh, has been a huge benefit for our community um, and the region. Um, there, this potentially gives us an opportunity to leverage that um, and to uh, assure for the long term that um, we build uh, relationships and systems that are uh, sustainable um, and when we really look long term um, while uh, and I think Gary Sheely the utilities director has commented on this uh, previously we had we essentially have um, room for uh, about uh, one more uh, reservoir that's about half the size of the new Williams reservoir based upon the supply that's available in the Aug glaze um, in order for us to build another reservoir that's actually the supply, the size of either Bressler or, or Williams, we would have to be uh, uh, accessing the watershed for the Blanchard River. And so if you look at this from a long-term planning perspective, uh, having a relationship uh, with Ottawa and potentially others in Putnam County uh, creates the opportunity for being able to do that. Again, that's thinking very long term, 40, 50, 60 years out as to um, what 
what we need to have in place in order to be able to uh, make that happen. But it's that kind of, I think, um, long-term thinking that uh, uh, our city fathers and mothers uh, brought to it when, when our current reservoirs were being planned. And uh, we're glad for the opportunity to begin to have those same kind of conversations with, with our neighbors to the north. So we look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. If I may, one more thing. We already do supply water to Bluffton, so this is just kind of a natural, <clears throat> natural progression, if you will. Yeah, the uh, Ottawa system reaches to Bluffton. Our system right now is um, uh, north to Cairo, and potentially we have a, a uh, couple of industries actually north of, uh, of uh, Cairo where uh, we're looking at an expansion. So our systems have been kind of growing in uh, kind of meeting in the middle. So there are opportunities there and uh, uh, we're going to get serious about thinking about how to make them happen in a more deliberate way. Great to have you here. Thank you. Um, also, um, Chuck uh, Eichelberger is here from the Lyme Area Concert uh, Band with an announcement about their upcoming um, program. Thank you, Mayor Chuck. Uh, because of the change of the Star Spangled Spectacular to this coming Sunday, uh, the Lyme Area Concert Band is changing its scheduled concert for Saturday night, the 5th to the 12th of, uh, of September so that we didn't, weren't doing two major things in, in one weekend. Um, we have a, a wonderful concert planned for the 12th. Um, Dane Newlove, who is a retired band director from uh, St. Mary's, plays in the Lima Symphony, Lima Area Concert Band, Lima Marimba Ensemble, and he's the principal percussionist for the Old Crown Brass Band from Fort Wayne, is, is our soloist for that concert. Uh, he'll be playing two pieces that are, are really nice. I went to the rehearsal last night and they're really nice pieces. So uh, just, but our, our, my chief uh, uh, purpose of being here is to announce that to make sure that everybody knows of that change because all our literature has said September 5th and that September 5th concert will now be September 12th. Thank you, Dave. And also this morning, uh, we have uh, representatives here from the Lyme Astronomical Society, and they have an event uh, this weekend as well. And Jean McCall, good morning. Thank you. Hello there. I want to mention one of the best scientific assets that we have in our community, the observatory and the Lima Astronomical Society that inhabits it. Over this past summer, June, July, and August, We've had several hundred members of our community come out there to visit, look through the telescope, uh, go to our programs. Uh, now that we're into September, September through May, the first Friday of every month, we have a program. All the public's invited to attend. Uh, you come out at 8 o'clock, we have a program each month. We do a number of different things out there. Uh, we brought uh, some photographs. We do deep, si deep sky photography. I brought three of them. Here's an example of M33, the spiral galaxy, something that you can uh, see through our telescope, as is this, the emission nebula. One of our members, Mark Williams, took these photographs, as well as one more you can see with the naked eye, but it looks a little better with uh, Mark Williams' photograph. This is the Orion Nebula. Everybody can see this with naked eye. If you come on out, we'll show you where it is. How, how far away are those? How far away? You're talking light years away. Yes. But they're all within the Milky Way galaxy. They're not far in astronomical distances, but you're talking light years, like uh, like you might have heard before, billions and billions of miles. <laughs> right, thank you. Very good. Well, the um, uh, Astronomical Society has um, uh, these regular events. They also have uh, special events every once in a while. Uh, last year's 
Earl, do you have some comments? Oh, yeah. I thought I'd mention. Uh, uh, come up here. Come up okay. here. I thought I'd mention this month is kind of a special month. We have a lunar eclipse on September the 27th, and uh, it ends a cycle of four lunar eclipses. This will be the last one. And we have what's called a supermoon. The moon is larger than usual. And uh, you might compare like a 14-inch pizza with a 16-inch pizza, about 30% difference in size. <laughs> and uh, so by having a supermoon, the, the uh, the eclipse will last longer. It'll be 72 minutes long. So you ha if you happen to be out September the 27th, about 10 o'clock in the evening, you might look up and uh, see a really neat eclipse. And you can watch the uh, moon change colors as it, see the, the sunlight passes through the Earth's atmosphere, scatters the blue out, so then the moon will look copper colored. Thank you. Well, that is all that we have for today. I uh, appreciate, again, everyone uh, switching things up to be here uh, at, the, uh, at the church with this announcement of, of the new uh, substation. And we'll uh, break down for interviews. Thank you very much.